father you've opened the person is interested in doing the usual thing knowledge practice of first and second cycle educational institution teachers on epilepsy in new Javan municipality so he has dodged one of them <laughs> attitude but in fact even though it is not here it is inside there right so in doing this there are a certain type of categorical variables that came across. So I've copied that part of the data for you. Uh, and we'll take it from there when we get to that place. So you see knowledge of teachers is here. Uh, we won't go too much about that. Attitude is there. Mm -hmm. Attitude and beliefs, yeah. So this is where we want to come up with the power. Uh, so you see that with this particular type of uh, questions, the person is asking, I know epilepsy as a contagious disease, even though the answers to the question should not be what he has done. Because if somebody knows epilepsy as a contagious disease, it's rather supposed to be yes or not. But he provides a certain range of answers that have magnitude. And the data you are going to get, you have strongly agree, agree, then neutral. Whatever means this, I don't care. Then disagree and then strongly what? Sorry. Disagree. So there is some magnitude in this thing. So what type of data does this one fall into? Ordered, yeah. So it's categorical uh, variable, but it is what? It's ranked, it's ordered, yeah. Such type of questions are called the Leckett skills. This is a Leckett scale. Okay, where there is a continuous, so this is a five point Leckett scale. Now, so in this particular case, what is happening is that for each of the questions, the person is supposed to show a state of agreement or disagreement. But in the middle, there is a neutral person there, meaning that the person has no opinion on this matter. I hope you are getting me. Yeah, the person don't know. So he has no opinion on this matter. So I tried to copy that particular aspect of the questionnaire for you in the Excel sheet. So it moves all the way down. And when you come to this side too, the other ones you're also doing too, there's also the same kind of, uh, what do you call it, like it scale on that. And then when you come to the down one also, there is also another session that has the same kind of like it scale on that. So now let's see how you analyze such a a uh, question uh, type of question and most people have been getting it wrong because what they do now is that after they've gotten this particular type of essay they try to assign numbers for it because it is added so what they will do is that you may say that strongly disagree is one disagree is two then neutral is what three then agree is four, and then strongly agree is what? Five. But like we talked about in terms of what you call it, using numbers to represent categorical outcome. In actual fact, these numbers should not have certain attributes. And in this particular case, these numbers cannot have multiplicative and divisive, uh, what you call it, attributes. You know, yeah, because the number five that is there, it's only representing what strongly what agree. But most often than not, people attempt to try and then analyze them as if they are continuous variables. So, for example, now somebody that attempts a question and does not know will have what two. Somebody that does not know anything at all and has not attempted the question at all will have what three. 
Okay. So, um, if you have such All right, so we want to use the question numbers to represent this. So what I'll do is that I'll put a question number here, Q18, and then I will scroll all the way down. I'll scroll it all the way down to the top there because that will make it simpler for us to see. So I'll scroll all the way down to this side. And by the time I get to this side, if yours has not been set to fail in series, you can set it to fail in series. So that gives us the question numbers. Is that okay with us? Yeah, hello. So you can fill yours in, in series also. So that we know that we can easily refer to the question and then we can know the, uh, what we call it, the attributes that. Uh, all right. So if we have something like this, now you can see that with the questions that we had, the questions have been grouped. It is not like all together. Some of the like it are assessing, each of the like it is assessing a certain particular attribute. So, for example, here, it is interested in assessing teachers' attitudes and then what? Beliefs. So, if we take the question one after the other, you can see that this session alone, from question 18 to 27, is what? Attitudes and then what? Beliefs. So, the initial attempt is to first recode, uh, what do you call it, change the answers to codes, okay? And then use those code numbers as, uh, what do you call it, the figures to do the analysis. There are three ways that you can attempt analyzing sets like it. Two of them are okay. One of them is absurd. And we're going to prove why one of them is absurd. The absurd one is what we call the mean. The one that is quite okay, but not so okay, is the median. But the best way to analyze such like it, it's what we call the cumulative percentages. So we're going to attempt within this one hour to try and work with all the three and see whether we come up with the same answer. Right. Okay. So what we first need to do is that since the whole sheet is the same responses that we are having, this is what we're going to do. We're going to replace everything on this sheet with what you call it uh, codes. But don't forget the first rule of what analysis. What is it? You never work on your original data sheet. So you copy this one and then you send it onto your new working data sheet. And then just paste it. So in order to copy, you just click on this sign here. Listen, do you have the data? Oh, you've tried all the pen drives in this world. Wow. <laughs> okay, let's continue. That gives you a holiday, uh, but uh, 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 that's what she wants, and that's what I don't want. Uh, so, 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 uh, Dominic, shift yours to her and let her be doing it whilst you rather observe. Let uh, be worried. <laughs> Who are those of them that want to be worried? Okay, let's continue. <laughs> right, so have you have you have you copied to the working sheet? Yes. Yet. Okay. So if you copy to the working sheet, then what you do is that you click on the working sheet and rename it. So you always watch what I do. If it is not, we are not conversant with it, then you do it. So you click on the working sheet right click on it you see rename you click on rename and then you put any name that you want we have used to put in rex rex, yes. rex as our working sheet so okay if you want to add trash to it that one fine with me okay rex trash okay so we name it rex trash right now 
we have five different outcomes on this sheet. You know, all of them is the same. So we can replace the all of them at once. Now we have what? Strongly what? Agree. Strongly disagree. Okay. Right. So let's hope that all of them has done it like that. So we go to click at this side. Then we go to find and replace. That's the binoscopes at this side. You click on the binoscopes at this side and then go to replace. So we will say that wherever it found strongly disagree. So you can even copy it from here. Wherever you find strongly disagree, you should replace it with what? One. So wherever you find strongly disagree, you should replace it with one. And then click on replace all. So all of them has been replaced. So find what uh, wherever you see strongly disagree, replace it with one. It's still on the board. On the project. Good. So the next thing will be wherever we find what disagree, we replace it with what? Two. Wherever we found disagree, we replace it with two. So since we are working on the entire sheet, you don't need to select. But if in case you are dealing with, you have selected the cells. Hello. Then let's move on to the next one. That will be what? Neutral. So wherever you found neutral, you replace with what? Free. So wherever you found neutral, we replace with free. So wherever you found neutral, we replace with. Yes. Wherever you found this thing, we replace with free. Wherever we found neutral, we replace with three. The instinct is to go and do agree for four. But if you attempt doing agree for four, it will replace all the agrees in there with four. So the strongly agree will now become strongly four. So you replace the one that have the double, uh, what we call the headers first. So you go and replace rather the strongly agree first with five. Is that understood? Okay. Then before you come and do the what the agree with four. So you go for the strongly agree. You can just copy it and put it there. So, so the strongly agree becomes what five. Yeah, so replace all. Okay. Then the last but not the least, the agree becomes what four. The agree becomes four. So if we've done everything right, we should now be having a sheet that is only full of numbers, but not selected. Hello? Hi. Are we okay? Good. Now, we did this thing arbitrarily without looking at the questions. In actual fact, whether strongly agree will be five or one depends on the what on the question now some of the questions that says that the more you strongly agree the wrong you become so in that case you have to get what a reverse so in that case if we find something like that in any of the questionnaire you should have a reverse of the code where in this case five becomes what strongly disagree and then what do you call it uh, one becomes what strongly agree are you okay? Yeah, and if you are supposed to reverse coding, 
all that you need to do is to select that particular place. Let's say if it is question 21 that we have to do reverse coding. You select that particular place like this, and then you do the reverse coding. So in this particular case, you may have to transform the figures into something else. Because as it stands now, if you want to change 1 to 5, that means you'll be having the 5 already there, which will be added to you. You won't know which one were the 5. So the only thing is that if you are reverse coding this particular sheet, you may just have a pen and then say 1 me A. You change, let's say, 1 to A. Are you getting it? And then you change 2 to, let's say, B. Then now you can easily ask for a 3 to remain the same because whichever way you come, it's signal in the middle. So after you've done that, you can now go and change your 5 to 1 and then your 4 to what 2. Then now your 1, which was A, will be A now. So now A becomes what 5 and then B becomes what, uh, what do you call it, 4. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. So let's assume that we are recording this particular question 21. So in that case, you are working only in this cell. So you click the cell, uh, what do you call it, header, that is the D, to select only that one. Yeah, we selected only that one. So in this particular case, we are just recording here. So we select the D to select the 21 or the column down, and then we go to find and replace. But first and foremost, we are coding our ones to let another figure. You can use any figure, it doesn't have to be A. You can use anything, but note it's down so that you don't come back and rethink and say, what one did I did the coding on? So I'm using Q. I like Q. I like Q so much. So I use Quill, Quill for that, and then I'm using two, two for two. I will use Z because that was the mark I used to score. When yeah, I like scoring Z. So now I will now come here and say five should be what one. So I just replace five. The code is in it. Good. Then I go to the next one. And I say that four, four should be, uh, what do you call it, replaced with what, two. So I replace four with two. Can easily change my Q, which was previously what, one. I can now change my Q to what, to five. That's then I can now change my Z to a four. So if I do this, I have actually. Hello, hello. Hi. Yes, the only casualty is the label at the top there, which I can easily put in there. That's what twenty one. Yeah. So you can easily code and record using the find and replace uh, function. I hope that is okay. Any question on that one? Good. So now, if we have coded like this, now let's go and separate the questions into the individual parts. Question 18 to 27, right? According to our questions that we are using, as opposed to be for some attitude. Because of time, we will not actually go into it to see which of the questions we are supposed to record and which one we are not supposed to record. We'll just move on with it. Okay. Now, so in order to work on this one, this is what we want to do. We're inserting an empty sheet here. So to insert an empty uh, cell, you just click on this one and then right click on it and say insert. So once we do the, we are split the questions. If I'm moving too fast, you can stop me. So we have inserted a sheet there. Let's insert another one in order to separate it from the other ones. Hello? Hello? Right. So in this particular case, if we want to do the mean system, this is how you do the mean system. So the mean system, don't forget that each of the this thing that we are having here is representing a particular respondent. Each of the rows is representing a particular word, respondent. So this is respondent number one. That was the results that he gave out for question one. Question 21, uh, question 18, 19, 20, 21. That was his response. When you come to respondent number two, 
this was the response that a person was also what gave. If you come to respondent number three, this was the uh, response that a person was gave. Now, so if you want to find in terms of attitude, as far as respondent number one is concerned, these are teachers. You want to find the teacher's attitude on what? Epilepsy. What you need to do now is that you use all the response that the teacher has given. And then now use that to evaluate the teacher's what? Attitude. It's just like the same way where we set questions for students to answer in an exam. And then the questions are varied, so many. But when we finish, we are able to score the question and then say that you had what? A pass mark above 50, you have an excellent score, above 80 or above 70, but you have failed because you have attained, let's say what, 40 or something. Are you okay? Right. Now, so if you want to use the mean scale, which I tell you it's not correct, I'll show why it's not correct. What you do is that you sum up all the scores for that particular category and divide it by the number of questions that are available. So that gives the persons the mean, what do you call it, uh, attitude. So in this particular case, we have this number of questions. That is 10 of them. Okay, with SL, as soon as you highlight the cell, you can see the figure here. So I don't need to, once I selected them, right, I know they are 10 and they are showing down here. So what I need to do is that we know that with SL, as soon as you put in an equal sign, it becomes what, a calculator. So we just need to put an equal sign here. We can choose to do cell 18 plus, uh, what do you call it, 19 plus, like that. But we can also make it easy by using the sum. When you come to this side, there are a lot of operations here that you can use. So the sum is here, the averages and the stuff are here. Okay, so you can even choose the average and then you get it. Average is mean. You can sum and then divide by what? 10. Or you can just choose what? The average. So for this one, if we choose the average like this, you click on the average, then you come and select the, what do you call it? The cells that are made up of here. So what I do is that I come to the 18 cell and then you move your cursor by holding the, what do you call it? Down up to this stage. So it means that you have seen that you are from A2 to what? J2. And you release that you go to what do you call it. Okay, so that means the average score of that person is three. Hello? Hi. Yes, so once that is a formula, we can easily just hold it from here, the small button that is here. You just hold it, you drag it all the way down to the side, you get to the end of the questionnaire, uh, the individual respondents, and straight away, you have got everybody's average score. Hello? Can we try that? So there are two ways. You can sum and then divide by the numbers, or you can just do the average. Since you are in SL, you can just do the average. So this one is what? The mean. Yeah, okay. So that becomes the mean scores. So that becomes the mean scores. Uh, you may want to put it into, let's say, uh, two decimal places. So if you want to put decimal places, you know this the sign, you can decrease. Uh, it's not working because I've selected the other side, which contains uh, what you call the letters. So you can easily just select them like that good you can just use this yeah and you have it whether in one decimal place or two decimal places so you can make it at one decimal place so since it's a formula what you do is that in order you see anytime i click on any of the figures you don't see the figure in my activity area the function area you see the formula so you want to make the formula go away you can just copy copy the same thing here 
and then paste it right there. But in this time, when you are pasting, you paste only the words, only the values. So you paste only values. So once I do that, the formula is out. Now it's only the values there. So when you do this, it means that now you have every individual, the person's average, what you call it, score on attitude. Why are you laughing? Because me and you have an unsettled issue. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> this is a five point like a scale. The mean score, the scale of performance. Now you have done the averages. So now you know every individual score on this particular, uh, what do you call it, domain that you ask. In this case, attitude on what? Epilepsy. So we want to see the attitudes of the respondents that you actually did with their attitude on what? Epilepsy. So now, how do you read their attitude? Now, if you are using the mean scale and it's a five point like it scale, then everybody that obtained an average of 3.6 and above is considered an excellent performance. So, in this particular case, since we are talking about attitude of what on epilepsy, anybody that obtained an average score of 3.6 and above will be considered to have an excellent attitude. Then the other band of the scale is 2.6. So 2.6 all the way down to 2.5 will be considered as an acceptable performance. And then anybody that have an average that is below 2.6 is considered as need improvement. That is, you know, in research with 2.6. So it is 2.6 3.6. Those are the boundaries. 2.6, 3.6. Those are the boundaries. No, when you are below 2.6, it's poor. From 2.6 or and then you are 3.6 and above is considered what excellent. So and above, yeah, it's considered excellent. So 2.6 all the way to like 3 points. Uh, what we call it, five, is considered as, let's say, good. If you want to read them in other thing, you can say, excellent, good, and then what? Four. So depending on the particular, uh, what do you call it, uh, this thing that you are, uh, particular domain or particular context, you may use words that are favorable. Yeah. So if you come to things like, uh, what do you call it, Quality assurance and quality performance, quality management. We, we use acceptable performance, need, uh, what we call the improvement, and those things. But for this attitude, you may say that people have poor attitude towards what? epilepsy. Those who fall below 2.6, and then the 2.6 to the other boundary, they may have a good attitude because it's acceptable. So it's a good attitude. Then those who hit the 3.6 and above, becomes what an excellent performance. So that's an excellent attitude towards uh, what we call it, epilepsy. But I keep saying this particular rating is what not correct because this one you are treating uh, what we call the categorical variable as though they are what continuous. You are giving them properties that they do not what they do not have. If you remember our first lecture on what you call it, variables. Yeah, rank data do not have what you call it, uh, what do you call it, divisible and then uh, what do you call it, multiplicative what, ability. But this one, what did you do? You added and then what? You divided, you find an average value. And then you see why it doesn't make sense. But let's, for the sake of analysis, let's continue doing this. So in this case, now we have everybody's average score. And then we have bands for them. So there are different ways that you cannot categorize them into what you call it, those bands. One way that I'm going to show you, and then uh, Dominic is going to show you the other way, using if function. So if he has forgetting, he can still start a re a reverse. Yeah. Um, are you the one who determined the average 
Or is it standardized that it's three points? Yeah, that can be found in literature. Yes? That can be found in literature. In literature? Yeah. If it's a five point like it's still. Okay, if it's a five point like, like yeah. That can be found in literature. <laughs> yeah, there's a five point like a scale. Strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree. That's what makes the five point. The answers are five. You can have a seven point like a scale, you can have other point like a scale. Yeah. So because it is five, that is why it is pitched as that. Yeah, the yeah, average is like that. Right. Okay. So now you have gotten this. Now you want to categorize the people into what? Those categories. Those that have excellent performance, those that are good, and those that are what? Below. So how do you do that? Excel can help you do that. We can use some of the functions that we've learned already to do that. So for example, we can choose to filter this. Okay? We can choose to just filter. So if you want to filter, we go to sort and filter. So we can just choose to filter this one like this. Then you have an arrow on top of the mean. So now you now go on that side and then you use what? The number filter. So you now use you now use the number filter. Okay? So the number filter, the first one we want is that it should be equal to or greater than or equal to what? 3.6. Right. So we go to greater than or equal to what? 3.6. So if you go to greater than or equal to 3.6, those are the ones that will be filtered. Greater than or equal to 3.6. So these were the number of people who had what? Greater than or equal to what? 3.6. So you can choose to give them a code. Number alongside. So let's say we want to call those people 3. Are you getting it? So every 3 we get is that. Or we can choose to call them, type in what? Excellent. And then just put them there. So if you want to use excellent, fine, you can just type what, excellent, yeah, or E or something. Yeah, and then later you can replace it easily because always you want to save time. So these are the excellent guys. So we just pull it all the way down to that side. Are you getting it? So we are now categorizing them into what? Into the individual groups. So that is the first group. The second group will be those that we call good, those who have good attitude. So those people should range from what? Greater than or equal to 2.6, but they should be less than 3.6. Are you getting it? Yeah. So we just come to this side, and again, we go to number filter, then we go to greater than. So they should be greater than or equal to what? 2.6, but they should be less than. So the less than, you put it at the one at the bottom. You come to the one at the bottom and, and scroll down, and you see less than. This one should not be less than or equal to. It should be less than what? 3.6. What, Good. So these are the guys who have good attitude. So in that case, we can put some G and then drag it all the way down to cover for all of them. So we just drag it all the way to cover for all of them. Yeah. Oh, I'm adding up. Okay, so I'm supposed to stop at the side. Right at that place. So everybody now have a G. So those guys are the guys who have good attitude towards what? Epilepsy. Good. So we now move on to the next one. That is the last bit. They should be less than what? 2.6. Do you agree? Yeah. So the next one, again, we're using the number filter. And they are less than 2.6. So less than 2.6. Anybody that is less than 2.6 means that a person have a poor, uh, what do you call it, attitude towards epilepsy. So we just put this one here, and I'm just put a P, a P for those guys, and then we can now move this case all the way down to this side. Good. So this is it. If you do this kind of, uh, what do you call it? The next time is just release your filter. So you just go to this side and clear your filter, 
and you realize that now everybody has been categorized into something. Everybody has now been categorized into something. So now you cannot have those categories. If you want to replace them, that's fine with me. Any question up to this stage? Uh, I should give you time for you to finish. You can see from here, the grading systems, like I say, you can find in publications. Yeah. So you can see for the mean system, high quality is what? 3.6 and above. And then uh, acceptable performances, the one you are seeing there, and then the one that requires improvement is less than 2.6. So that is the first one that we are dealing with now. You can see it from uh, the, this publication. Uh, uh, let me just show you. They are all over anyway, but this is one of the publications that Abdullah Al uh, Marsh. Yeah. 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 Later, you can find out the publications are, are there. Uh, actually, you may find it in my podcast. That is, if I choose to edit and send it to you. But if you pay me some coins, maybe I will do. Yeah. Intellectual property right? That's all you are paying. <laughs> Good. So what the median score is doing is that I said three, but there are four because I said three, five like it. One of them look like the same criteria, the quartile, and then the uh, median looks virtually the same. They give you the same outcome. So now, the median scale, what it does is that it ranks the, what you call, the five like it points in the terms of ranks. That is from one to five. And if you do from one to five, then the median will fall at what? A three. So anybody that is above the median have what? A high performance. And anybody that is below the median has what? A low performance. And anybody that is in the middle of the median with acceptable performance. So in this case, a high quality is going to be four and five. That is the agree and then strongly agree. Then the one that falls in the middle, is going to be what acceptable performance and the one that comes down is going to be what you call it not acceptable performance but where the problem is with especially a question that we are having like this where the number three is not a response so the person that did not respond you are saying that that person is what has done well then a guy that attempted the question and then had it what wrong yeah, so that is why it's problematic with this kind of uh, this thing. So for certain like it questionnaires, maybe the next time around we will deal with another like it questionnaire. That where this will mean have a meaning. For example, if you have a like it questionnaire that says true sometimes for the third one, it says what true sometimes for the third one. That means that it is a level of acceptability. True sometimes agree and then what strongly agree then the others become what strongly disagree and then what disagree in that case the third part being three it it, it is sensible but with the one that we are having where the third part actually is a known answer then it makes using the median scale also problematic now the quartile is the same way having the ranks and then splitting them into four parts. So in the quartiles, the first quartile group will fall within the 25th, below the 25th percentile. Then the second, uh, what do you call it, group will fall from the 25th percentile, but below the 50th percentile, which happens to be the median also. Then the third group of people will fall from the 20, uh, 50th percentile to the 75th percentile, below the 75th percentile, then the last group will be the 75th percentile above. Now, since it's a five point like it scale, if you do the, what do you call it, a percentiles on five like it scale, what is going to happen is that you're going to get a four, five up, and then the, what do you call it, the other ones coming down. Yeah, so you see the first ones, it will group just the same way as the, the median, because it's five. So when you session them like that, one, two, three, four, five, if you do them into four groups, like you take the percentile, the upper parts will fall within the same. So it becomes just like the mean. Now, 
the most acceptable way of doing this thing is the cumulative percentage. Now, in this case, we do the cumulative percentage of the acceptable response. So, in most cases, we'll be doing the cumulative percentage of 4 and 5. But if the questions are negative, then it becomes the cumulative percentage of what, 1 and then what, 2. So, in that case, your interest is only on the acceptable what, performance. That's with the cumulative. Yeah, with the cumulative. Your interest is on only the acceptable performance. So, what you do is that within every question that has been answered, okay, or within every domain, so we take it singly, then we take it in a cumulative for all the questions so that you understand. So, what you want is that within the particular domain, if you are doing for a domain or you are doing for any inputs, the inputs are the questions, individual questions. So, if you are doing for any input, your interest is that for that particular input, how many people chose what four and five so the people who chose the four and five over the total population who answered that particular word question so we ask the first question so if we suppose to use this uh what do you call our uh, uh questionnaire as a guide then if we take this one i know epilepsy as a contagious word disease so here in this particular question our interest is in those who chose agree and strongly what agree because it's not a forward it is not a reverse coding it's a forward coding so the more the person agree the more the person has a better attitude uh, what you call a wrong though, though this one is a reverse coding right so the more the person uh, what you call it agrees to this one it means that the more the person does no know what have a bad uh, attitude towards what epilepsy. So this was some of the causes uh, that we should have recorded if we want to. So either we recall them so that the ones becomes what the four and then the five. Uh, are you getting it? Yeah. Because if somebody says I know epilepsy is a contagious disease, epilepsy is not a contagious what disease. So if you think epilepsy is a contagious disease, then if you have a wrong attitude towards what the first. It means that you don't like the person to come close to you. Are you getting it? But if you strongly disagree, that means your attitude towards an epileptic person is going to be what? Right. So this is one of the questions that should have been what? Reverse coded. Okay? But because of time, we are not taking attention to each of the questions. But if you reverse code this question, that means that the strongly disagree becomes five. The disagree becomes what? Four. Are you getting it? Right. So you can do still do cumulative four and then what? Five. So for, for the sake of example, let's work on this same question, the question 18. So question 18, we are going to reverse code. We are going to reverse code question 18. And you know how to reverse code question 18, right? Yes. We will start by first transforming either the one and two to something else. And then later we transform the, what do you call it, the three and four to something else, right? Okay, so let's reverse code question, uh, what do you call it, 18. So all that we do is just do our find and replace. So just like we did for the first one, yeah, my 1 will become my Q. My 1 becomes my Q. I love Q. Ah, uh, don't worry. When I finish, I'll do it. But I've selected only question. Uh, what do you call it? So only Q18. Only Q18. Yeah, it's only Q18. So my Q is not that I do this thing anyway. That's good. Okay. Which other do I like? Okay, let me use B for blessing. And my my two my two becomes a D for Dominic. Okay. All right, so now I can comfortably transform my 5 to 1 and then my 4 to what? 2. So my 5 now becomes what? 1. I've reverse code that. And then my 4 becomes what? 2. 
my four becomes two. Then now I can go and say my B can now becomes what? Five. And then my uh, my D for Dominic becomes a four. Good. Okay, so that's question eighteen that has been recorded. That has been recorded. So let's assume that we want to find a cumulative percentage of four and five for question what eighteen. So what you do is I select the eighteen. Okay. Then your interest is in how many people had what four and then what five. So this is what you do. You can go and filter it again. Just go here and then filter. Then when you come to the filter section, you deselect everything. Your interest is in what? Four and then what? Five. So your interest is what? Four and five. Your interest is in four and five. All right. So we filter and then our interest here is that we are interested in only the four and then what the five so when we click four and five it is telling us that the four and five is two hundred and what seven out of three hundred and ten uh, what do we call respondents hello so this is two hundred and what seven out of what two three hundred and then this so if you want to find a cumulative percentage for this particular input it becomes the two hundred and seven that is two oh seven over three ten times what hundred yes. hello hello yeah so you can easily go to this side like this and then just do equal to 207 slash what 310 and then multiply it by what 100 so as far as this one is concerned this is it no are you okay with it yeah so with this one as far as this one is concerned this particular input is concerned we have 66 point what point 0.8 which we can run up to become what 67 so if you want to look at the performance and you want to use the same categorization so if it is of high quality you should get what above 80 80 and above so in this particular case because we are getting 60 what 68 it means that it is what acceptable so as far as the respondents uh, what do you call it attitude was concerned with that particular question alone with a particular question alone that we did with it was what acceptable so this is the cumulative percentage <laughs> yeah, the concentration is only on four and five. <laughs> this place, uh, we're there. In the work, so, uh -huh. the high quality and acceptable. Yeah. Uh, the range for the higher quality is 3.6 and above. Uh -huh. It includes 3.6. On the top, yeah. set up also 2.6 to 3.6. It is the right up. It is supposed to be 2.6, but less than 3.6. It cannot be at the same data place. But you see the one down is less than 2.6. So, so me, 2.6 is inclusive. Yeah. That's good observation.
Hello. Uh, yeah. So these were the same things that we did. So let me resume. Yeah, I released a photo. So I want to do the cumulative percentage for all. This one I'm not doing for only one. I'm doing for the whole domain, the attitude. So I'll copy this one because I don't want to uh, mess up with the mean. Then I'll come to this side and then just paste it at this side. So in this particular case, I come and do find and replace. Now with this my find and replace, anybody that I have chosen one, that person gets zero. And I have chosen two. That person gets zero. Either anybody chose three, that person gets zero. Now, if you choose four, it's a counting distance, so I give one for that. Five, I score it one. This is what cumulating four and then what five. five. So when I finish here, when I take this particular respondent, I know the number of four and five that that person would choose. And how do I do that? I only need to sum it back. So equal to, and then I go to what? Sum. So I just go here and sum it up. I click on sum, and I just add all the person's cumulatives. And at the end of the day, I just click what? OK. Do you agree? Yes. Do you agree? Good. So now, after I've done this, I will just pull all the way what? Down. Do you agree? Yeah. So that is the person's cumulative what score. Now, this cumulative score, the person is supposed to have gotten what? If the person was scoring all of them, four, five, four, five, four, five, the person should have gotten how many? Okay. Should have gotten what? If each of the questions you were supposed to have scored them, four, five, four, five, the person should have gotten what? You'd have gotten what? Ten. Are you getting it? Because there are ten individual what? questions. And if your attitude was right for each of them, you get what? One. So in this case, the person should have gotten what? Ten. So I want the cumulative percentage. The figure he has gotten here is the person's what? Cumulative, what do you call it? A score. So if I want the person's cumulative percentage, it will be the score that the person have gotten over the total score that the person should have what? Should have got. So in that case, it becomes what? Equal to six slash what? 10 multiplied by what? 100. So this guy, 60. He has what? An acceptable performance by virtue of our grades. So I can now look at where everybody fell. So with this, I can now look at where everybody's attitude towards, what do you call it, epilepsy. Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. So this one is the cumulative what percentage. So this is the cumulative what percentage. This one is the cumulative score. And this one is what cumulative percentage. Are you getting it? So this is the person's cumulative percentage. So now, depending on the scale that we are using, if you want to go by the scale, this scale, that is 80 and above, means excellent. And then what, 60 to the, what do you call it? Less than here. Yeah. And then that becomes what? Uh, yeah, acceptable performance. So the same way as we did with the other one, we just come to this side. What do we do? We just what, filter. We go to this side. And the first one we want what greater than or what it should be greater than or equal to what 80. That is if we are using the 80 mark, greater than or equal to what 80. So all those people who got that are getting our what our E. Then we come to the next one. That should be greater than or equal to what 60. Do we agree? But it should be less than what? 80. But it's less than 80. 
Yeah, so everybody that falls here get our hot, our G. Good. Then anybody that falls below our uh, 60, that is less than 60, that person gets our uh, what? Our P. That is our poor man. Person have a poor attitude towards what? Epilepsy. <laughs> so after this one, we have also be able to grade people by virtue of what their attitudes towards what epilepsy. <laughs> yeah. The mean score. And then a cumulative percentage score. So these ones were the mean scores and a cumulative percentage score. So we're just going to match the data and see whether there are variations in the outcomes. So this one was the cumulative percentage score, then this one is the mean scores. Right. So you see let's arrange them, sort them and let's come so that no, how do you sort them alphabetically? Okay, so the yeah, so, the, 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 the. so these guys, the same ranking, the same ranking, the same ranking. What we got here, there's a problem. What we got here, there's a problem. All of these guys are being rated as what? Good performance. But when you use the cumulative percentage, they are poor. The same thing happens here. Is, okay, the same here. There's a vast difference between the two. So the means are not working because with the means people that are getting three 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 their grades are still going what high even though they didn't what they didn't answer any question. So with the mean you can choose not to answer any question for all the ten and make a good grade. Because if you don't answer any of the question at all, you get three, 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 and the average of three, 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 ten will give you what a three. That means you'll be good when you don't answer any question at all. <laughs> Are you getting it? Yeah. If somebody chooses out of the five, if the person chooses what we call, uh, let's say four, four, four. The person is going to get 20, and the other ones he chose 111. That means the person is going to get the other five going to add up to what you call uh, the distance. The person is going to get 25, right? If you divide 25 by the 10, the person is going to score what? 2.5. So the person that had four, uh, five correct, half of the 10 is correct, and then the other one he will he will have an average of 2.5. The person that did not answer anything at all. That person have for three. So the person that have half of the ten correct, you see the person is what four. So you realize that it does not reflect the outcomes. So the person had agree, agree, agree four, uh, five of them. That will give him five times four, will give him what twenty. And then the other one he has strongly disagreed, strongly disagreed, which were one, one, one. That will give him twenty five. So 10 questions, 25, you find the average, the person will get what? 2.5. And 2.5 does not meet 2.6. So that person becomes what? Poor. Meanwhile, he has scored half of the mark. And the guy who did not answer the question at all, as far as this questionnaire is concerned, is neutral. He has what? Six. Uh, he has what? Three. An average of three. So you realize it's problematic. And it is because you are treating a categorical variable as a continuous variable. So the actual scores you are generating and presenting really does not represent the what? The outcomes of the response. But it's done all over. You look into literature, it's done all over. So sometimes when you use strong words for people's work, they think uh, mm -hmm. 
you are being non-diplomatic. But they are complete trash. So if you are used mean in doing this thing, all the things that we are presenting here, as you can see, all the people who are supposed to be poor that are being made good. So at the end of the day, the outcome is what? It's absurd. It's complete trash. It doesn't represent the response that we got. You can see that. All of these guys would have been rated as good. So would have been rating otherwise people who have poor attitude towards what? Epilepsy as having what? Good attitude. So the outcome does not really represent what is happening on the what? On the ground. And if your outcome does not represent what is happening on the ground, it's complete trash. You better not even have presented because you are misleading. Now, the worst case is that how they even analyze these results. They'll do this like it kills all for what do you call it, knowledge, attitude, and stuff. And what they will do is that for every question, they'll be doing percentage for it. Every question, so within the domain that we looked at, like attitude, for every question that they ask, so from question 18 to the 27, you have 12 graphs, uh, what do you call it, 10 graphs or something, 10 bar charts for that. What sense does that make? Does that tell us the story? It can't, it can't tell us the story. Anyway, it's 8 o'clock, so you can go and play around the other parts of the data. Now you have it. You can go and play around the other parts of the data with the other distance using the same kind of thing. And then tomorrow we'll continue from that. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm.